Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. An earthquake cluster here in another one I want to show you in just a second. Let me get to this one here. Over the last 10 days, almost 30 earthquakes. That's common. There's always stuff around, but it's been a little bit more than normal and the magnitude just a touch higher than uh, normal. There's been a couple over four in magnitude, which does happen. Now, an earthquake cluster is kind of defined as a cluster. It's a, a series of earthquakes, but there's not necessarily one big one in that. There's a lot of generally small ones, but we've been feeling some anywhere from parts of the Dominican Republic through Puerto Rico and parts of the British and U.S. Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico, that's where we've had a couple that have been a little bit stronger over the last couple days, including this one very early this morning or late last night. This one about four in magnitude, not too deep, about six miles deep or 10 kilometers deep. This one just off of the uh, north coast, but we've had more activity in the southwestern coast and again over toward uh, the eastern end of the DR over the last couple days, but that is a new quake. And then you see as you get over here just a couple days ago, there's another one 4.4 in magnitude just to the north of the uh, British and U.S. Virgin Islands. So it, a quake cluster can last for upwards of a week, even longer than that. So I do expect more uh, earthquakes in this area and we'll be feeling some. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a bigger one, uh, but that can't be ruled out either. So uh, monitoring that closely. What's going on here is it's it's kind of an earthquake zone, a very active area. That's why we have those earthquakes around right here, the Puerto Rico trench. And what you have going on here, it's kind of things sliding past each other. So it's a transform fault. So you get these uh, plates, if you will, just trying to slip past each other. And that causes that friction. And sometimes you get uh, some of those earthquakes. So it's a very active area uh, right along that uh, trench. And that's one of the typical hot spots that we watch. Now, a shallow quake is anywhere from uh, zero uh, right at the surface to about 70 kilometers down or about 40 miles down. And a lot of these have been shallow and that's why we've been feeling them. Thank you for leaving me that information in your comments. Of course, the deeper down, the less you would feel it. Of course, it also depends on the magnitude. A really big uh, quake even far down, we would uh, feel. Another spot I've been watching, Guatemala and parts of Mexico. Guatemala, there's another cluster. You may have been feeling some of these quakes. Guatemala, El Salvador, parts of uh, Honduras and again uh, southern uh, Mexico we've had a couple quakes but that cluster in Guatemala some of these have been four to five in magnitude so th those have been a little bit bigger so we have two earthquake clusters that I'm watching and again anything kind of uh, looking a little strange out there or anything significant I'll pass along that information for you now we have one front up to the north little more moisture building toward Suriname I want to get into the forecast where we're going to see some rain set up we had some welcome showers and spots in Barbados uh, uh, yesterday, Grenada, we had a couple last night. We have a front here, but it is that time of year. Most of the fronts are rolling through the U.S., not necessarily diving down into the Caribbean. I'll get into the Atlantic region of Canada in just a second, but there's that next front that's moving through the southeast U.S. with that chance of some rain and storms. That'll skim by parts of the Bahamas in another system that's been rolling in toward the uh, west coast of the U.S. This is by the time we get into tomorrow. There's that front over toward the east coast of the U.S. and you see it stretching down toward the northern and central Bahamas but generally staying to the north of the Caribbean and then another front moving through. So a lot of fronts through the U.S., but now that we're in March, most of it stays up to the north. So I'm also going to keep an eye on that wildfire threat very carefully. That is going to creep up before we get into our wet season and the uh, hurricane season. Again, we could have a good period of uh, drier weather, not good. Uh, I mean, we need the rain. You know what I mean? Just a substantial period of some drier weather. A lot of us have already been dealing with that. So we need to get some rain, just not a lot. You see more of it here, again, pulling back toward the Great Lakes, down toward uh, the southern parts of the U.S. So there's that front clipping by. Now, Guyana and Suriname, there's a little more moisture starting to feed in, and that is a sign of things to come. And once that kind of moisture belt lifts up to the north and we get closer to the start of hurricane season, which starts June 1st, of course, we'll get into our wetter season. But as of now, we're tracking just some spotty showers. But like we had yesterday watching St. Lucia, Barbados, we may see a couple showers sneak in. This is tomorrow. You see some of that rain up toward the northern Bahamas, a better chance of some showers tomorrow. Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos though, not much whatsoever. Cayman Islands, Jamaica would just be a passing shower. 
Belize and the Yucatan of Mexico. Again, not a lot of activity. So uh, uh, we're going to see it a little quieter and watching the dust and the lower air quality. Now, Atlantic region of Canada back through New England. We've got one system that's been pulling in, bringing in some of the uh, rain, and we'll see that throughout the day in parts of uh, New England, kind of combining with this front that will move in. So as we get to the Atlantic region of Canada, some of us will start out with some rain, and then that may switch over to some snow. This is our Wednesday afternoon. Uh, parts of uh, New Brunswick, we may catch some of that snow. And you see, again, starting as some of the rain, which would be the green and the yellow, and then you get into kind of that mix there and that pink and then that white shading. So by the time we get into Thursday afternoon, you see uh, Newfoundland on the kind of north side of this. We'll see that better chance of snow trying to wrap in on the back side of this. And then as we work our way into Friday, it tries to leave, but still some snow and accumulating snow at that even as we work our way into Friday. So Newfoundland, we could see some substantial uh, snow amounts. Keep me posted on what you get or don't get in the comments. So as I was mentioning, Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, an isolated chance of a shower today, about a 30% chance. Trinidad and Tobago, a 10 to 20% chance, 30% chance in Barbados today. You may see a few showers trying to scoop by Barbados into St. Lucia. We work our way into Grenada, rain chance limited. We did have a couple showers passing by. We may still get a few around. Same thing, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Just depends on where they set up, where we'll see a few of those showers and storms, um, mainly just showers though. Martinique, a couple isolated ones. Dominica, the rain chance is not super high. Same thing as we get into Guadalupe, 10 to 20% chance. And then mainly dry Antigua and Barbuda. We're mainly dry St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat. Same thing as we get toward Anguilla and St. Bart's. That rain chance stays low. It's low in St. Martin, Saba, Stacia. It would be a passing shower and that's it. Puerto Rico, a little higher by the time we get into Thursday with that front. That'll be just to the north. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, about a 10 to 20% chance of a shower. Dominican Republic, a limited chance and mainly dry and on the hot side as we work our way into Haiti. Bahamas, rain chance, as I mentioned, northern Bahamas, a better chance tonight into tomorrow. Turks and Caicos, rain chance stays on the low side. Just a 20 to 30% chance of a passing shower across Cuba. Belize, that rain chance limited. You get toward Cancun and Cozumel, rain chance also on the limited side. Uh, we'll be mainly dry around Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, we'd have to get lucky to get a shower. Still generally slightly lower air quality with some of that dust around. Bermuda, passing shower possible, and then we'll keep an eye on that front. Costa Rica and Panama, that rain chance is on the low side. A little higher in Costa Rica, a little lower in Panama. But Guyana, rain chance 50% tomorrow. Suriname, scattered showers possible tomorrow. Northern Venezuela, rain chance just about 20%. So lots to track, of course, watching those earthquake clusters, the one near Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and the other one near Guatemala. Scattered areas of showers around, especially Guyana and Suriname, dust around over toward the ABC Islands, back toward uh, Trinidad, and tracking the ash with El Popo. I highlighted that in yesterday's video uh, in uh, near Mexico City and Puebla. Lo uh, lots of ash and still, again, those eruptions that have been going off uh, overnight and this morning, and I'll monitor those earthquakes elsewhere. Thank you for being part of this channel and sharing this information and taking the time to subscribe. Have a good rest of your day.